Okay, let's show gradient descent. We know that how gradient descent works. Every time we pick up initial point x0 and do multiple times, like x0 is the randomized, uh, is a random initialized parameter we have in the deep learning at different time, at time equals to one to capital T, every time we compute the gradients on the past uh, point we have, we compute the gradient of f x t minus one and choose a learning rate and the minus the current uh, x t minus one to get the current x t. So that is kind of the batch, uh, the gradient descent we had. Now here showing some little bit concept, how to choose the learning rate. This applies to all these non-convex and the convex problems we have. The idea here is, here is that uh, we can, like, given a small enough y epsilon, and a given a small, uh, given a delta which long is smaller than this number, then by the tidal expansion that we mentioned here, given any fx, so if we do a, a first order approximation, in the nearby area, this, this guy should be very good approximation in the very local uh, area. So we can approximate fx by the first order uh, function, the linear function. Okay, so then what we can do here, so under the condition that is the y epsilon. What we can do here, we can choose a sm small enough linear rate, uh, alta is less than y epsilon, y epsilon divided by the law of the gradient. So then we know that the minus uh, linear rate times the gradients, we are less than the y epsilon. Then we know that the new updated version, x minus linear rate times the gradients, uh, it's, a new, it's a new value, we are kind of equal to fx minus uh, alta times the norm of the gradients, which should be less equal than fx. If gradient is not zero, we are making progress if we choose small enough C at, at, uh, eta, the linear rate. If it's already a local minimum, we cannot make any progress. Okay, so that is a, the basic idea how we choose the linear rate. We should choose linear rate small enough to guarantee that we can decrease at any time. But the, the theory is, in practice, we don't need to decrease the function value at any time. Like, uh, we, in overall, we decrease, that's good enough. We don't need a guarantee every time we decrease it. Also, the other thing about convex optimization is it's called a convergence rate. That's a key concept, like how to measure the goodness of optimization problem. So here we have some basic results for gradient descent. So soon f is convex. And its gradient Lipschitz continuous with constant L. So that's the key assumption here, which means that given any x and the y, the, the difference between the gradients should be less equal than L times the difference between X and the Y. It kind of gives you a, a smoothness assumption. So, and so for example, let's go back to, for this figure. In, in the flat area, if we move uh, X around, like uh, choose where nearby X and the Y, the gradient didn't change too much. So the L is pretty small. For small L, it's good. It's a flat. But if you move to the right area, if you slightly change, if you choose X and slightly change near, nearby Y, the gradient maybe change a lot, especially around the peak. So which means the L should be very large, which makes the, the flat is not so uh, smooth. So smaller L means it's smooth, and the large L means it's pretty, uh, like a lot of, it's not so much smooth. Ideally, uh, conceptually, is that smooth function is easy to optimize. The non-smooth one is hard. So okay, so L is the major, is the major of the smoothness. So then, so then if we use a linear rate, um, sm less equal to the one divided by L, one over L, then we can guarantee that after t steps, the difference between the loss at f x t minus f x star, which is the global minimum, 
be less equal to then the distance between the initial point and the optimal point, that is, um, and divided by two times uh, eta times t. So there's a lot of information here. Firstly, if if it's smooth, L is small, which means we can use a large learning rate. Intuitively, if it's smooth, I can it's, if it's smooth, I can. I compute the gradients, I can work along with the gradients for a long time because the gradient doesn't change too much. Otherwise, if the gradient change a lot, I compute the gradients, if I, if I work too long away, the gradient already changed, it's not a good estimation anymore. So that we cannot, um, we can only use a small learning rate. And then, like look at the bound, like the right hand, the right hand is called a bound. Firstly, it depends on how goodness of the initial point, x0. If it randomized the choice, okay, just uh, in, in, uh, usually it's a bad choice because re randomized x0 make it maybe far away from x star. But on the other hand, if you use a fine tuning, which is f0 is from a very good star, it's very close to x star, which make the gap much uh, smaller. Okay, so that is why fine tuning kind of make the um, optimization much easier. Secondly, it's, um, it's divided by two times um, learning rate and the t. Uh, the more iteration you run, the, the gap will be small. And also it depends on the learning rate. If the learning rate is large, then the gap is small. If the learning rate is small, then the gap is large. So both learning rate and the time kind of control. Um, basically, learning rate is step size. And the time is the number of steps. So we time together, we kind of measure how we can, how long we have been worked. So this is called the convergence rate. It's the learning rate that we cannot choose because it's, uh, we, the maximum we can have is depends by the, the loss function. So it depends on the, by the data and the, the neural network, for example, if it's convex. So the learning rate we cannot choose, the only thing we can choose is the t and number of steps we, we want, want to do. So we call the convergence rate of one over t is that it's a linear convergence rate, which means the more we can do, and uh, it's a linear cross, linear approximate uh, the uh, final uh, the the function value. So which means if we want to get um, a solution which is close enough to f x star by y uh, epsilon, we only need one divided by epsilon iterations. So that is very decent speed. That linear is kind of, it's not so fast, but you, have, you can be expo exponentially fast. But it's not so slow because you have even other choice, uh, your worst case, like square root of t. So linear convergence rate is actually pretty decent uh, thing. If you have anything, you can converge linear faster, that's like, uh, that's good choice, okay? So then, well, um, the, the last proof of the class and the, the, the most uh, complex one is the, to, com to prove this, uh, the convergence rate. Okay, and that's the only enjoyable thing about convex optimization. The convex thing, you can prove a lot of things. So let's do a proof. It's a pretty short, actually three slides only. So by the assumption of L Lipschitz means that um, uh, we given any y in the right hand, we have two, three items. The first two items is actually the first order of the function. And the last one is the, is the, is the additional one. By convex, so let's show that. So given a function here, so this is the first order uh, approximation of um, at point uh, x. So by convex, we, we know that this, all these values will be above this line. And then by the strongly convex one means that at this point, the second one is the second order, like uh, the second turn is like, I, I draw whose uh, second order is like L. So this line will be below this one. So this is the, uh, the upper bound, this is the lower bound. This is by convex, this is by um, L ellipsis. 
So we can actually bond all these values uh, for the function we have. That's a very strong assumption. And here, what we can do here, we can plug y. Y is just uh, given x, we update x to get the next time step uh, solutions called y. It's actually, actually x t plus one if you want. We can just plug in. We can show that we can rewrite the last one a little bit here. And we also take another assumption here. The learning rate is less equal to than one uh, divided by L. So we can show that the new value the next time update value of fy, the y, less equal to the fx minus learning rate divided by two and the gradient norm. Which means that if the gradient is not zero, we always make a progress by a proper learning rate. If the gradient is already zero, no progress we can make. So we already find the solution there, okay. And, um, also another thing, like at the beginning, um, it's a random point. The gradient usually much larger than um, which, which. So for example, if and if it's far away from the optimal here, it's here. If far away from the optimal one, the gradient will be large, and close here will be small. So which means, the, given the same step size, at the beginning the step we can work is large. We can decrease the linear rate. Uh, the function values a lot, but at the end, you can see this almost like uh, it decreases more. You can see a lot of similar things in practice. Okay, so the second one is the, actually the key thing. By the com by its convex, fx is less equal to than um, f uh, the optimal position f uh, x star um, plus the gradient of fx and x minus x star. That is uh, the definition of a convexity, uh, convexity. So the only thing before we show that we actually, we should move, the before we show that we should move the second turn to the uh, left. This is the different definition we had before, but now we move to right. And then fy also e less equal to than fx minus something. This is the one we had in the last slides. We plug in this fx, the first one to the second one. And we can get, like, uh, uh, we can get fy less equal to the fx star plus something. Okay, so then we just move x star into the um, left hand and rewrite a little bit on the right hand. We put divided by two times uh, eta and the first term we have two terms here. And let's look at this. So then it sounds familiar because like we have two times eta times uh, one turn times another turn minus square root. That's pretty similar. We can add in something to make it simple. We're adding x minus, uh, x, minus uh, x star squared here. We added something and uh, minus something and so we didn't change the equation. Okay, so lastly, we merge the last three things, three items into a single one. Like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty, um, it, it's a pretty standard stage. Okay, if you merge the last three into a single one, we can see that it's actually x minus eta times the gradients is actually equal to y. That's the definition of how we update the x. So now we can get very good uh, thing here. Fx minus f x, Fy minus f, x star equals to then uh, x minus x star minus uh, y, y is the next time step. So that's a very good for, for, uh, form. We can cancel each other. So the last the stage is like, we sum all this past the t step in Fxt, now we change to t, uh, xt here minus the optimal uh, solution, less equal to the sum over all the terms here. You can see they can cancel each other. Oh, that's the beautiful the thing. So the lastly, we get x zero minus x star minus something. This is positive, we can also remove it. So it's less equal to x zero minus x star divided by two and eta. eta. 
So because we know f decreases every time because of the choice of an any rate, on the right hand, we can just uh, less equal to than like uh, f x t minus f x star, less equal to the average of the first, the um, summation of the t terms here, so we can divide by t, so we get the final state we want. Okay. Any questions so far? You can, you can look back, in, but the math is pretty simple, but the, because we didn't teach math too much, so it sounds complex, but it's pretty simple. And applied to deep learning, the F here is the sum of all these laws across all the training data. We already see that before. And X is the, all the learnable parameters, the convolution of uh, kernels and the weight in the dense layers, the bias. Um, but F is usually not convex, so the previous theory cannot apply here. And so the other thing, like uh, two minutes, we talk about the stochastic gradient descent. Like the SGD actually, <laughs> it's, a, it's a Singapore a dollar. It's a pretty large number here. Uh, so the difference between SGD is that we know that instead of computing FX sum over all this training data we have, every time we sample just the XT minus one, so to computer gradients. So we just different between SGD and the GD. So um, you can see that um, the, the bottom figures for gradient descent and the above one is for SGDs. So it's not, it's a very noise because of all this. Every time we only compute a single point. Um, we have a lot of ways to choose how to choose the gradient random examples. We can either choose random, every time random sample one, or we can choose like a one by one. It's called the incremental gradient descent. If you use it by random, the only thing here, like the expectation of the gradients equals to the true gradients we have. So that's a key assumption of SGD. So this is, so this, the SGD is like is unbiased estimation of the gradient. And the last slide is like to talk about if F is convex and we are using uh, a linear rate which is decreases over time, Without the assumption of the strong is uh, the smooth term, we can got the new conversion rate of one over square root of t. But if, if uh, under the same assumption, but uh, for gradient descent, uh, 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 sorry. So the first one is for gradient descent, a stochastic gradient descent. For gradient descent, at the same time we have the same conversion rate. But if your assumption is that it's ellipsis smooth and use a fixed linear rate we can show that we can improve the converge rate by o, one, over one, o, uh, 1 over t. But the same problem here that it doesn't improve for SGD. So in the theory, SGD, you need decrease learning rate and the converge rate is slower. Okay, so that's a drawback of SGD. And in practice, like uh, you don't need to decrease learning rate so dramatically. So we show that for deep learning, you can keep a larger learning rate and then drop at the end. And so, like, we will show in the, um, this Thursday how, in practice, SGD compared to GD. Okay, so that's all about today's 